So our first problem, we need a region. So our region will have a circle. So the circle x squared plus y squared equals a squared is rotated about the x-axis. And find the volume. So step one on these problems is graph out your region. So you have to know what your region looks like. So it seems a little silly, but you should graph this circle out and decide what are the x-intercepts, y-intercepts. What is the center of the circle? The origin. And what's the radius? Okay. Radius is A. So go ahead and draw that circle. So rotate about the x-axis. So I'll use green. I think I used that before for drawing my rotation symbol. So here's our axis of rotation. What will this shape look like when we start rotating it? Sphere. I'll turn it into a sphere. Now, do I need the top and the bottom when I rotate to get a sphere, or can I just use the top? Just the top. So that top will rotate you won't need the bottom as well. So let's go ahead and erase the bottom part of the circle because when we rotate, that top half is going to rotate all the way and cover the whole sphere. So we're just going to use the top part. So you can draw a sphere over here as best you can. I'll show you how to do it if you're not terribly artistic. You're basically drawing a circle and an oval inside. Pretend like my circle is a circle, but your sphere looks like this. How do I cut this up with cross sections? It's a sphere, so you could cut it any way you want, but there is one direction of planes that will be really nice here. So no matter how we cut this thing up, it's going to be circles. So we could, we could go horizontal, so we could cut like this, absolutely. But I see the axis is already, we already have a rotation axis. Let's cut perpendicular to our rotation axis. So if we go back for a minute, the problem is the sphere has too much symmetry, so I can cut any way I want. But if we go up here, cut with planes perpendicular to axis of symmetry. So I want to follow that rule right there, even though in this case, uh, you could cut any way you want, and you're going to get circles. But I want to cut with uh, perpendic perpendicular to the rotation axis. So that's the way we're going to cut up the sphere. So we got perpendicular to the rotation axis. We'll just pick that x value, and we'll draw what our slice looks like here. So there's a slice. So we're cutting perpendicular to our axis. So I'm going to redraw the slice below. And I need to know what is this radius r of x. So let's trace that radius back to the original. So that measurement will be right 
here. That's R of X. And that comes back to right here. So that's where that measurement comes from in our region. So any questions about taking that measurement on our cross section that actually looks like a radius and bringing it back to the original? Now we look at the original. When this radius moves left and right to cover the whole region, so one way to think about this, uh, this is going to be a dx integral because to cover the whole region, I have to change my x-coordinate. So this is going to be a dx integral. Another way to realize this is a dx integral, the width. I drew it way wider than it actually is, but that width is going to be dx, which is a super tiny um, amount along the x-axis, super small um, change in x. This is going to be a dx integral. The other way to think about it, if you want to squeegee a window and your squeegee is vertical, which is how you should probably clean your car window, uh, you won't squeegee very much if you move it up and down. So if you're holding your squeegee vertical, you go left and right. So that's how you would clean your window. So that means you need to change your x-coordinate or have a dx integral. So lots of ways to think about it. So we need a dx integral. Is this the bottom and the top function for the entire region? The bottom function and top function change when I go across the region. So it's going to be the same bottom, same top function. So I need a function for r of x. I do know the equation of this circle. How do I turn this equation into a function of x? What do I solve for? You know, solve for y. So you want to write y as a function of x, and that function is your height or your radius here. So go ahead and solve for y. It's not too hard to do. Just a little subtraction square root. You're going to have to deal with the plus minus. So I'm going to choose the positive square root. What part of this graph would the negative y equals negative square root a squared minus x squared? What part of the graph would that correspond to? That would be the bottom half down here where y is negative. So if y is negative, you get the bottom. You're drawing the bottom half of the circle. When y is positive, you're drawing the top half of the circle. So I wanted the top half. So I intentionally went with the plus, not with the minus. Now it turns out you're going to square it in the volume formula, so in this case it wouldn't matter, but in general you want to be careful about that. So our r of x is this function right here. And all we do is take that and plug it into the volume formula. There's nothing more to it. Well, we've got to get the endpoints, but that's not too bad. So volume integral a, b, pi, r of x squared dx. That was the volume formula we wrote down at the end of class yesterday right there. So I'm just using this volume formula. And pi is constant, so that can go outside the integral. r of x, that's square root a squared minus x squared squared dx. What about endpoints? I need a min x value and a max x value. It's a little strange, but the minimum is negative A, the maximum is positive A. And it's all the same A value here. So every little A you're seeing is the same, uh, corresponding to the same number. So how do we integrate this right here? You could go trig sub, but that is way, way overkill. What algebra can I do? Yeah, the square square root cancel out. And this is polynomial. 
So antiderivative, you have to be careful, a squared is a number. So what is the antiderivative of a number? It will be the number times x. So in this case, it will be a squared x. And you can always guess and then check. So take the x derivative of a squared x. That is just a squared. So you can always do a guess and check. And then what about x squared antiderivative? Uh, x cubed, x cubed over, three. over 3. So just do a guess and check. So that's my guess. My check, derivative x cubed over 3 will be x squared times 3 cancels the divided by 3. And we're going from negative a to a. Now just plug in the endpoints. So we get pi times a squared a minus a cubed over 3 minus pi times, I'm plugging in negative a, so we have a squared times negative a minus we're actually going to have four negatives, so it's negative a cubed, which is negative a cubed. You keep your negative, but there's a fourth negative sign. So it's going to be plus a cubed over 3. So we've got four negatives there. And reduce this, or simplify this as much as we can. So we got a cubed here, and then 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. So factor out your a cubed, and you have 1 minus a third. So we get the same a cubed over here. And what we're going to have left is negative 1 plus a third, which is negative 2 thirds. And that's two negatives make a positive. So we have pi a cubed, 2 thirds plus 2 thirds. 4 thirds pi a cubed. That should seem familiar. That is not coincidentally the volume of a sphere, which is what we knew we were finding originally, but now we have our method matches what somebody told you somewhere along the way, and you said, OK, sure, and I went with it. So now you can see where it came from. Although the person who told it to you may not have computed it with calculus. They probably just told you what somebody else told them. And somebody else probably told them who told them, et cetera. So it's good to know how, where do these things actually come from, not a chain of people who told you. So that is our first volume. We're going to do another volume now. So you and I are going to end up writing region bounded by, region bounded by lots of times. Because pretty much every problem in the next two or three sections is going to cover some region that's bounded by some curves. So let's get lazy and write RBB. So that's going to be region bounded by. So I'll write a little note off to the side. RBB region bounded by. So our region that's bounded by these equations here, y equals square root x, y equals 1, and x equals 4. So this is our region rotated about the line y equals 1. So this one's going to be a little bit more tricky than last time. Let's just get that region drawn, and then we'll worry about how to rotate it. So if you can't draw your region, it doesn't matter about anything else, because you're not going to 
you don't start with the right region, there's no way you're going to get to the volume. All right, so draw that region. The functions are pretty easy. Just make sure your y equals 1, that's a horizontal line. x equals 4 is a vertical line. Any region questions before we rotate this? So I think the last quiz I gave you, no, the second to last quiz I gave you had an ambiguous region as I was making my answer key. There's lots of different regions that you could have made. I would do my best to give you equations that have one clear region. So if you keep extending these functions, the lines are easy to extend you will see that there's no other finite region enclosed here. So like for example, these don't come back together and then there's some second region over here. So there should be, in the problems I give you, there should be one clear finite region that we're using. And I'm going to use green. Now I recommend strongly you get at least one other color. You can go with a pen and a pencil, that's good enough, but get another color so you can do things like I'm doing here. So you can draw, you can basically mark up your graph and not be confused because everything is the same color. So we're going to rotate this right here. And I'm going to draw the shape we get. So I'm going to put one copy above, one copy below, and then try to make it look three dimensional. So we have this wedge shape on the top and another copy of it on the bottom. And then we need to draw the communicate that it's rotated like this. So it's going to look a lot like a nose cone for a rocket. And there's only one way we're going to slice this up. What will my planes, my uh, planes that I'm going to slice this with, how should they be oriented? So it'll be vertically perpendicular to your rotation axis. So switching to blue to draw the plane. So we'll just pick, you can pick basically any x value you want. You don't want to pick one super close to one end or super close to the other end. I just go somewhere near the middle. And then draw what that slice looks like. And remember if you cut a um, region uh, solid that was generated by rotation, if you cut it the right way, you should always be looking at circles. So if you cut your solid revolution the right way, you should be looking at circles. You should not be looking at other shapes. Uh, the circles will fit together to form a weird shape, but the actual slices will be circles. So we'll draw just one slice down here. And of course, just like before, we have that same measurement that comes back to on our original right there. So any questions about our radius measurement, tracing our radius measurement back to the original region? And this can be, if you're not a visual person, this can be a little bit extra tricky, which is why I take all these intermediate steps. Uh, if you have a very good visual spatial way of thinking, you might be able to figure out the radius right away without drawing all these other pictures. 
something weird is happening. The bottom, the minim minimum function is not y equals 0 here. So we have to be careful. We're not going all the way down to the x-axis. We're stopping short. So here we actually have to pay attention to big minus small. So we have to go big minus small here. So we'll label this. This measurement should be, and it's a function of x because we're moving left and right. That's how we squeegee our region. So we have a vertical cross section, so we're going to squeegee our region by changing our x coordinate. So before we write this out, is for our entire region, is there only one function on the top? So we got that one function on top and that one same, uh, not same, but the, a different function, but one function on the bottom. So we don't have to break it up into two pieces. Now if our region is shaped like this, I'd have to go two pieces for my region. I'd have one piece uh, that used that horizontal line as the bottom function, another one that used that curve as the bottom function. So just like before, and we'll do problems like this, you sometimes have to cut your area, partition your region into pieces and then add up the separate volumes you get. All right, what's our big function? It's a big function of x, not a big function of y. Y equals square root of x. So yep, we're going to pick the square root of x part. So this is our big y is square root x. What is the small function? It's kind of boring. Y equals one. one. So our small function is 1. So there's our radius, square root x minus 1. So that's r of x. All we have to do is put it into the volume pi integral rx squared dx. And we need an a and a b. We'll get those in a minute. Let's just fill in the function. So it's square root x minus 1 squared dx. So b is pretty obvious. The big x value is 4. That was pretty much given right, right there when you got the x equals 4. That was going to be one of the two boundaries. What is the small x value? 1. So you can see the small x value because I drew my graph very carefully. What if I didn't draw my graph very carefully? How do we intersect these two functions? Set them equal to each other. Well, you're going to pick, they need to have the same y coordinate, so you just put a 1 in for y in the first function. And you get 1 is squared x, so x has to equal 1. So we got 1 and 4. So any, any more setup questions? We got our bounds, we got our radius. What are some ideas to integrate this? Algebra. I like that, algebra. You could try u sub, but what's the derivative of square root x? Something with a 1 over square root x in it. But that we don't have a 1 over square root x, so let's not go with that u sub. I think that would make things worse. So foil it out first. So square root x, square root x is a regular x. Minus square root x, minus square root x, minus 2. Square root x is x to the half power. Minus 1 squared is plus 1 dx. And you just do the anti-power rule for all three terms. So you don't quite have a polynomial because technically that's the half power, but you treat it like it's a polynomial. You just go anti-power rule for every term. And you just got a little fractions to deal with. So I'm not going to finish this integral, so I'm just going to write dot, dot, dot. So when I write this, I strongly recommend you go and finish the integral. So this is part of your homework. So these problems we did, we rotated about basically a horizontal line. And there's no reason you sh could only rotate it on a horizontal line. You could rotate it on a vertical line, and you're solid revolution will, uh, you'll still have a solid revolution. It'll just be sort of facing up instead of facing sideways. 
So let's look at if we rotate rotate a region about the y-axis. So it'll be pi times area dy. So in this case, you need a radius function, but you need a radius function of y, not of x. So there's our rotated about the y-axis. And we'll do one example here. So a volume of solid generated by rotating the region bounded by So this first equation might be a little tricky to graph. It's definitely a quadratic or a parabola, except what's weird about this parabola? It's sideways, so the y term squared, not the x term. So how can you graph something that you're not sure about? A lot of points. So I think the xy intercepts will be useful. And then we'll pick some other points and plot those. Uh, but just before you even do that, your parabola is either going to open that way or it's going to open that way. It's going to look like one of those two. So you want to have a little bit of intuition before you start graphing. So it's going to be a sideways parabola. So is it easier to pick an x value or a y value? And then find the other one. So if I picked an x value, what's tricky about finding the y value? You have to solve for y. I'll have to solve for y, but I'll actually have two answers for most of those, because I'll do a square root with a plus minus at the end. So I could pick x values, and then my y value, I'll actually get two y values for most of those x values. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got x. We're going to choose x. And now let's solve for y. So we get x minus 1 equals y squared, y equals plus or minus square root x minus 1. So there are some bad x values to choose. So for example, y is 0 a bad x value to choose? Yeah, square root negative 1. So it's going to be complex. So 0 is a bad x value. That's not even the domain. So I could write down the domain. So I need to make sure x minus 1 is always going to be greater than or equal to 0, or I'll be doing uh, having complex y values. So x is greater than or equal to 1. So 1 is our smallest x value. So now I'll start our uh, chart at 1. So let's forget about that. We'll go 1, 2, 3, and see how that works out. All right, when x is 1, we got plus or minus square root 1 minus 1, which is always going to be 0. There's no negative 0. There's just 0. And now plus or minus 2 minus 1 square root, which is plus or minus 1 plus or minus 3, square root 3 minus 1 is plus or minus square root 2. That's an ugly number. What's the next good x value? 5. So we got to jump. I could do 4, but I'll have the plus or minus square root 3. But we'll jump all the way to 5. And we got plus or minus square root 5 minus 1, which is plus or minus regular 2. So I think these will be enough. Let's forget about that ugly square root 2 
one right there, so we won't actually plot that. So we have five points that we can graph here. And the first one happens to be the vertex. And so to plot these points out, I know x is going to be uh, to the right of 1, so I don't need any negative x values. So at 1, our y value is 0. At 2, the y value is negative 1 and positive 1. And then at 5, 2, 5, we're negative 2, positive 2. And now we connect together. And our other, so any questions about that parabola before we go on? So our other boundary is x equals 3. So there's our x equals 3 line. So there's only one region that's not infinitely large, and that's that little wedge shape um, on the left side. So you don't need to draw this much. You don't need to draw all this over here. So I really just need that part of the region. And we're rotating about the line x equals 3. So I'll draw this. I can either draw the rotated uh, solid above or below. It doesn't matter which way you go. I'll just do it above because I have the space here. So rotating symbol right there. And you want to do one copy on the left of this axis and another copy on the right side. So just like before, you're doing mirror images. You don't have to be super accurate here. Oh, that's pretty bad. Good enough. That looks way too oval-like, though. All right. That'll have to work. And to show this is not just an oval, it's actually a, I don't know what the right word is. I want to say sphere, but it's definitely not a sphere. What's that? A top. Yeah, it's basically, it's a deformed sphere, if you deform it the right way. It's sort of like a compressed down sphere, like you're standing on a tennis ball or something like that. All right, we have to cut this thing up. There are some reasonable choices, but there's only one correct one. How, what should my planes look like when I slice this? Horizontal. So they need to be perpendicular to our axis of rotation, so they're going to be horizontal. So that rule is always going to um, hold for whenever you're cutting things up into disks. So our cross section, just pick some point along the y-axis, or not the y, the rotating axis. So I'll just go right there, and then draw your cross section. Will look like that. Now I'm going to move that over. So I'm just looking at a cross section here, which is a circle, and I will need a radius. Now I have a choice on where I want to draw my radius. So there's two choices, and I'll draw them here in red. I can either go on the left side or the right side. What would make sense when I trace back to my original? The left side? Left side makes sense when I come back to my original. So I'm going to choose the left side to draw my radius on. Now, I just wrote the letter r. I didn't write r of x or r of y. It's really important that we choose the right variable. So let's think about squeegeeing this window here. Do I change my x coordinate or my y coordinate to clean the window? Y. So change the y coordinate. So it's going to be a dy integral, or everything's going to be a function of y. 
You can also think about the thickness of this region right here, or not the region, the thickness of this cut is dy. That's another way to think about it. So it's super tiny and is dy thick. So we need a function of y right here, and I'm going to go and fill in the other r of y, r of y. So I need a big and a small. As I cover the region, does my small function change? So remember, small function in this case will be on the left side. Small on the left, big on the right. So that parabola is always on the left side. So small function is not changing, and right side is pretty clear. It's that horizontal line not changing. So just remember, big is on the right when you're thinking about uh, x values. So you want your big x value. So our big x value is 3. And what is our small x value? It's going to be a function of y. y squared plus 1. Somewhere. Oh, too far. So I'm going to turn this into a function of Oh, it is a function of y. Perfect. So it's already a function of y. So I don't have to do anything. So it would be y squared plus 1. So we got our big minus our small. And if I label this graph, this was uh, x equals y squared. Can we do a little bit of algebra in there to make it a... Uh Two minus y squared. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we do that, though, if you're having trouble thinking of big and small and like should it be x's and y or y's, looking at this, I want my big. This is really my big x minus my small x because it's two x values. So that might seem a little strange, but the big x value is three. What is the small x value? It's written right here. The small x value is y squared plus 1. So you're thinking in terms of x values, but they're written as either functions of y or constants. So that can be a little bit tricky right there. So there's our big x value, and there's our small x value. And that's how you want to think about it. They happen to be functions of y because we have a y uh, antiderivative. And of course, we do a little bit of algebra. So we got 3 minus 1 is 2 minus y squared. And all we need to do is put this into our volume. So this is pi integral r of y squared dy from a to b. It's pi integral 2 minus y squared squared dy. Now, a and b, those are my start and end values. Those are, we're in a y integral, so those are y values. So I need my smallest y value, my biggest y value. So it's a little tricky to see exactly what they are here. They're somewhere between 1 and 2, and the other one's between, somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2. So how do I find exactly where they are? So that's going to be a, that's going to be b. How do I figure out A and B? So I see I got two equations here. So I'm going to basically, their x coordinates need to match. So we're going to take 3 and plug it into the x coordinate of the first equation. So we're intersecting. So this is also known as solving a system of equations. You generally won't be linear. So you can't use the linear tricks. Using, you can't use matrices in row operations, but you can use the elimination and substitution. So sub, sub in the 3, subtract. So we got square root, positive square root 2, negative square root 2, which makes sense because that's between 1 and 2. So 
So our a is negative square root 2, our b is positive square root 2. How do we integrate this? Yep, algebra, foil it out, and then you have a polynomial. So that's how you integrate this. There may be some other ways to do it, but I don't think any of them will be faster than going the algebraic route. The trig sub will definitely be overkill here. So all of these solids that we looked at were actually solid all the way through. So we're going to look at now is if we cut out part of the middle. Yes, it could be a donut. In fact, I think, do we do the volume of a donut? We should. It's very important. How much more donut am I getting when it's filled instead of hollow in the middle? Dangerous words. <laughs> All right, so cut out the middle. So this is going to look like a volume of region bounded by So how can I tell, before I even draw the rotated version, the actual solid, how can I tell that this is going to have a hollow interior? Because it's not touching the x-axis in A point, assuming that is the x-axis. So it's not touching, so if we just change, instead of calling this the x-axis, so it's not touching the rotating rotation axis, or the axis of rotation. So anytime you're not touching your rotation axis, there's going to be some hollowness going on. So this is our hollowness right here, whenever they're not touching. Now, just to warn you, even if you're touching in one point or some points, if you're not touching in every point, there's going to be some hollowness going on. So it might be touching in one place. It might even be touching in a lot of places. It might be all filled in down here, but then you have this little bit of hollowness over here. So it only has to have a small part not touching. I happen to draw it with nothing touching. All right, so draw this region. We'll draw it over here on the right side. You don't have to be accurate on this one. So just do your best. Copy, exact same method as before. Copy the shape on the top and then reflect it to the bottom and draw it a second time. Now trying to represent this rotating region with a hollow interior looks a little messier because there's the, you're kind of drawing two shapes at the same time, an inside shape and an outside shape. Maybe it's better if we don't have that second So I drew it with these horizontal or these vertical lines in here. It might be artistically better to draw it without that right there, but I think I'm going to leave them in because they came from when I redrew my region. How can we find the volume of this shape? We could take the area of the inside minus the area of the outside? Yeah, pretty much. You're going to find the 
basically pretend that it was solid with the big shape, find that volume, and then find the removed volume, and subtract the two. So that's how exactly how we're going to find the volume. So go big volume minus the hollow removed volume. So our volume is going to be big volume minus small volume. So let's look at, we'll mark this up with our uh, radius, except now there's going to be a two radii. There's going to be a little radius and a big radius. And I'll use capital R for the big radius and lowercase r for a little radius. So you don't want to write them at the same x value. So this will be little r of x. If I write on top of it big R of x, that's going to look bad. So you want to pick one that's close. So that's little r of x right there. Big r of x is right here. So don't write them at the exact same x value, because they'll appear on top of each other. And then we're tracing that back to the original. So that's little r of x, and then we have big r of x. And you get these the exact same way, big minus small, big minus small. You just have to do it twice, basically. So we know individually the volume. So the big will be rx squared dx minus integral same a and b little r of x squared dx. And you can use this formula. Oh, there's a pi missing. That's kind of important. Let's do some calculus slash algebra. What did I do here? It's the integral of two functions subtracted. You can split up your integral to be the difference of the two integrals separately. There's just the extra pi that factors out as well. You can use either one on your cheat sheet. Doesn't matter to me. I'd recommend not putting both because it's just a waste. So whichever one of these two you want to use, go for it. You only need one. The first one is better for intuition, but maybe a little slower to compute. The second one is a little faster to compute, but a little worse for intuition. So I'm not going to tell you which one to use. They both work if you use them correctly. And we'll do one problem with this. We'll do that tomorrow.